Welcome to the 2020 Virtual Candidate Forum. Our desire is to create informed voters by giving the Plant City community an opportunity to meet every candidate on their ballot. At the Greater Plant City Chamber of Commerce, we are a connector and convener in the community of current and rising leaders. When we all work together, we are Plant City Strong. This event would not be possible without community involvement. We would like to thank Tampa Electric, Fried Egg Productions, South Florida Baptist Hospital, the Hillsborough County Farm Bureau, and the many other generous supporters. Without further ado, let's hear from this candidate. Hi, my name is Deanna Hurley, and my business, Deanna Hurley Photography, is a member of the Plant City Chamber of Commerce. I have the pleasure of serving on the Board of Directors. Our committee for the Government Affairs has prepared a few questions for every candidate on the ballot running for a position that will represent Plant City. Today, I'm here with Bill Yanger, who is running for County Court Judge Group 7. Bill, will you give us an introduction of yourself so viewers can get to know you? Well, thank you very much, and thank you to the Chamber for giving us this opportunity. Obviously, as everyone knows, uh, with everything going on right now, particularly COVID, uh, it's particularly difficult for us to get a message out to people. I miss my, uh, my uh, Plant City Chamber luncheons and, um, and seeing everybody, but uh, you know, hopefully this will take its place as best it possibly can and we'll get, be able to get to see each other all uh, soon, soon again over, over a nice lunch. Um, I was born and raised in Tampa to parents who were born and raised in Tampa. Uh, I um, went to schools here, Jesuit, and then uh, Jesuit High School, and then uh, University of Florida, and then I uh, uh, went to law school out in Texas. Uh, I, um, uh, we came back after a couple of years. Uh, uh, I practiced out there for a few years in a, one of those mega firms uh, as a young associate uh, doing business litigation, and uh, moved back here. I actually married in, in law school, another law school student, and we moved back here to uh, to Tampa in 1989, 1980, I'm sorry, 1988, and I went into practice with my father, who I was lucky enough to, he had a, a thriving practice here in town, and uh, he was uh, gracious enough to give me a spot in a dark office in the back corner, uh, and I went to work. Uh, he and I, for those, uh, th those first uh, 10 years of my practice, I've been doing this for 34 years, uh, raised three children here in Tampa as well, I forgot to mention that. Um, but uh, he and I practiced together about 10 years and primarily did personal injury work, workers' compensation, social security, disability, essentially people who have been broken, we're attempting to get them um, uh, um, help and assistance. Uh, second 10 years of my career, it's kind of three 10 year increments. Second 10 years of my career, I was with a couple of large firms, a few large firms here in Tampa. Uh, and my practice began to morph more into commercial litigation uh, which is what I do now and have done for the past 15 years or so, uh, almost exclusively uh, uh, business on business, individuals who own businesses uh, against each other, uh, you name it. But um, uh, that is the focus of my practice now. Um, and uh, since 2010, I have owned, I founded and have owned uh, Yanger Law Group here in Tampa uh, and practice out of there. We've had as many as 12 staff and attorneys uh, currently. It's myself and a paralegal, uh, which frankly makes it great for remote practice, which is what we're doing primarily now. Um, but that's essentially, you know, me in a nutshell, and hopefully you get to know me a little bit more than some of the other questions. And so why are you running for judge? It's a question we get asked often. And uh, I think my answer is probably, um, my answer is a little different. Um, I, uh, I could easily, and I may say this several times today, I could easily be very comfortable continuing to do, to do what I'm doing now, have a comfortable practice, a successful practice. I can go to the beach on weekends if I, if I choose. Um, but um, in August of 2016, uh, I lost my 22-year-old daughter to a domestic violence homicide down in Fort Lauderdale. And I tell people that not for sympathy and not because I'm going to be some judge that's going to go out on vigilanteism, but um, it was a difficult time, as you might imagine. It was brutal. Uh, I worked with the prosecutor down there and the, and the detectives, and it is still an open case. It's still not been filed. But it brought me significant clarity. I think most people can imagine that at a time like that, 
And after an event like that, you start, you start to think about what you do, who you are, what kind of shadow you want to leave, um, you know, what you want to do with the 35 years that you've been putting into this profession. Um, and I thought about that a long time, and I just decided that that 35 years uh, needs to not just go away when I retire. That 35 years needs to be put in to some sort of community service, some sort of um, service to the people that got me here. Uh, and I look forward to doing that, not only for young lawyers, but for the voters and citizens of Hillsborough County. Uh, where can the judicial system improve? Oh boy, um, uh, you know there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of areas, but I'm going to focus, I think, on um, on access to the courthouse, access to justice. Uh, uh, not for any lack of trying, I will tell you that uh, the legislature, uh, uh, you know, yearly it seems, are uh, attempting to put in and implement programs and 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 put money into programs uh, that provide not only the poor but everybody, the ability to get into the courthouse effectively, uh, timely, uh, expeditiously, and get their, get, get their problems solved. Uh, obviously, I practice more on the civil side as opposed to the criminal side. In the criminal side, there are statutes that require a speedy trial, required cases to move through the system. On the civil side, it's not that easy. And um, people with a lack of resources have a very difficult time prosecuting their cases or even defending their cases um, in, in, in the courthouse. And I think together with the legislature, uh, adding money, um, uh, uh, resources, uh, judges, adding judges to the Hillsborough County. Um, uh, I think we have 63 judges in Hillsborough County now. We could probably use 100 and keep them all busy. Um, and I'm sure the one, the 63 now would love to have 40 more. Uh, but uh, uh, I think access to justice, to justice is, is, the, uh, is the biggest problem. And I, I look forward to working with the 13th District uh, Circuit's uh, chief judge in any, way, in any way he wants me to, to uh, assist in making that possible. And what is the greatest accomplishment of your legal career? Well, you know, I've had a lot of very interesting cases. Um, I've been very proud of some of the high profile cases that I've had. I've, uh, I've represented a very well-known uh, international young pop star who was ripped off by a promoter for millions of dollars and we chased that guy down and were able to get a resolution for our client. I've represented a world championship uh, light heavyweight boxer, sat ringside when he knocked out uh, his opponent back in uh, 2003 and, and, and was there for that. And that was, a, you know, that was obviously fun and, and, and very, very, uh, very thrilling. Uh, but you know what? I've also represented uh, uh, single moms who are staving off eviction. Uh, I've represented house painters who are just trying to get paid for the work that they did on a, on a home. Um, so I, I've done all of the work for people and for entities and for people that own businesses. But with that said, I think my, uh, the thing I'm most proud of is the fact that in the midst of all that, in the midst of representing these people and handling these high profile cases, I was able to build a practice from scratch. I literally started in 2010 uh, after the economic downturn with a laptop, a printer, and me, and a, a lease on a small office in a building that we now own. Um, and I built that practice, like I said, up to we had as many as 12 staff and lawyers. Um, and we continue to uh, uh, bring in counsel that we need on a contract basis. Uh, but to, to have a full-time practice and do that 40, 60 hours a week, as well as essentially run a small business, make sure there's paper in the copier and, frankly, toilet paper in the bathroom, um, we, uh, you know, we, it, it's difficult. But we've never missed a payroll, and I'm very proud of that. Uh, attorneys sometimes tell stories of cases that changed them. Something about the experience gave them a new perspective or way of viewing the judicial process. Can you tell us the story of a case that changed you and has better prepared you for judgeship? Well, I have a lot of stories, but I do have one in particular that uh, uh, has weighed on my mind, um, actually in, in a good way, um, for years and years. Uh, it was back when my father and I mentioned it earlier, my father and I were doing social security disability work. I did primarily the most of that work. And for people that aren't familiar with it, if you have a disability that is recognized by the medical profession, um, and you makes you unable to work or unable to hold a job of some sort. And it's more technical than that, but the point is if you can't work because you're disabled, uh, the uh, United States government allows you to make an application to receive social security disability. 
it's extremely difficult to do in the best of circumstances. I mean, amputations and things like that are a, pretty much a slam dunk. But I will tell you that mental illness uh, is extremely difficult to prove or at least extremely difficult to get the, the Social Security Disability judges to provide you with, um, with, with, with relief. And I had a young lady who was uh, just had turned 20 years old. She was a single mom and a significant victim of domestic violence. Uh, and, and it had affected her uh, just, just brutally. And uh, we, ma we made the application. Um, it was rejected. We made it, a, we, we appealed and went back before him with additional testimony of doctors and psychiatrists. And the judge came back and he was a tough judge, but he came back and granted my client uh, relief and got her on social security disability. And the good part of that story is she didn't stay on social security disability. She used it as a mechanism to improve her life um, and, and, and frankly, the life of her young daughter. Um, and uh, at some point in time, I don't really know, right? I can't remember right now how long ago it was, but it's probably been five years. I received a note from her saying that she was now living in Georgia, I believe it was, and she had a fine job. Her, da her daughter was in school um, and she was a productive and, um, and uh, you know, happy member of society. And uh, hearing those stories, you know, I can represent world championship boxers but uh and and international pop stars but frankly uh, doing something that improves someone's life like we did with that young lady um i'll never forget and i'm very proud of it and that's it for our committee's questions is there anything you'd like the viewers to know before we go vote bill yanger on august 18th 2020 uh, or before um my phone number is 813-601-9500 i answer my cell phone you can see all about me in my practice at yangerlaw.com, and you can read all about our campaign and our endorsements at, um, at yangerforjudge.com, F-O-R, not the numeral. Um, and I invite everyone to do that, and I invite anybody to call me and ask me questions about who I am, what I do, what I represent. Um, and again, I appreciate the uh, Greater Plant City Chamber of Commerce and all the folks over there, the members as well as the staff for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time, and we hope you have a great day. Take care.